So this is an image from Dr. Schneller's uh, lecture on gastric pathology. And there are three histologically distinct areas in the stomach. There's the cardia, which is right by the esophagus. There's the pylorus, which is the distal end right before the duodenum. And the fundus and the body look histologically the same, so those are grouped together. Uh, we're still going to see the same layers as we saw in the esophagus, which is mucosa, submucosa, and muscularis externa. And this picture is good to point out that the muscularis externa is different than the esophagus and the small intestine because uh, previously we had an outer longitudinal layer and an inner circular layer, but in the stomach there's actually three layers of muscle. So there's an outer longitudinal layer, the middle circular layer, and the inner oblique layer. So let's take a look at the uh, microscopy slide. So let's start with the gastroesophageal junction. Um, on low power, you can kind of see here where you have the stratified squamous epithelium. So let's zoom in. Yep. And we can see that we have nuclei all the way out to the most superficial part. So it's not keratinized. Uh, just deep to that, we have the lamina propria. And it's a little harder to see the muscularis mucosa because it's a little shredded. Uh, I think that's just an artifact. But you see it here. These are the smooth muscle cells. Uh, remember, we're not going to see skeletal muscle for a while, probably not until the um, uh, external anal sphincter. Uh, it's all going to be smooth muscle from here on out. Um, so you can actually see the muscularis mucosa more clearly over here as you go more distally. These are bands of smooth muscle. All right, so if we go on low power again, you can see this huge mass of smooth muscle. Uh, you see these bands of smooth muscle cells here. Uh, you don't see any striations, and you have central nuclei, so that's how you know these are smooth muscle. And if we zoom out, we can see all the way up here, we also have smooth muscle. It uh, looks a little weird here, but you can still kind of see nuclei. And the reason why it's so big, this whole thing is smooth muscle, is because we're actually at the uh, gastroesophageal sphincter, which is what you'd expect to see in the transition from esophagus to stomach. So let's look for that transition of the epithelium itself. So here it's still stratified squamous. And here you can see the simple columnar epithelium. So somewhere around here is where the transition is going to be. So now let's move into the stomach. And here we can start seeing gastric pits and the gastric glands. And something that's not obvious from looking at it from a histological slide is that the pits and the glands are actually continuous. So I found this picture online that that uh, shows that the glands are actually continuous with the pit and go into the lumen. And they kind of have to be, if you think about it, all the secretions from the gland have to make it to the lumen, otherwise, um, why bother, right? So if we look at the slide again, um, these have to be continuous with one of the pits. It's just not in this particular plane of section. It's actually pretty hard to get this whole structure here just because you'd have to get a fully longitudinal cut all the way down. Uh, we might see one right here, so this is probably the gland, and then here's the pit, and the intersection would be the neck. But most of the time you're just going to see them look like they're separated, like you see them here, uh, but they're actually not. And another picture that shows that pretty well is here. Um, so here you have the pit, here's the gland, and the intersection is the neck. So here, for example, this uh, gland is continuous with one of the pits that's just out of this particular plane of section. All right, so let's look for our layers again. Uh, so this is the epithelium. Here's the lamina propria. And the glands are considered to be within the lamina propria. So it's like a lymphoid aggregate. And here's your muscularis mucosa layer again. So deep to that. We're going to have the submucosa, lots of blood vessels, lots of collagen. And um, on low power, you might notice that of these gland cells stain darker as you go farther distally. And the reason for that is uh, 
uh, when you're in the cardia, which is right by the junction, the gland cells are, are pretty much all going to be mucus secreting cells. But as you're traveling towards the fundus, you're starting to get some of those uh, chief cells that stain very basophilic, especially over here. Uh, and those are the ones that secrete uh, pepsinogen and I believe lipase as well. Um, it's harder to distinguish the chief cells from the parietal cells. We'll see it better in the uh, next slide. Uh, so if we keep moving distally, uh, it's kind of more of the same. Uh, we have some pits here, some gland cells down here. There's the muscularis mucosa. And out here, this wavy stuff is mostly collagen. So here's the submucosa. Um, I wonder if that, that might be a nerve plexus right there. And all right, let's move on to the next slide. So this is a slide of the fundus in the stomach. And remember that the fundus and the body of the stomach are going to look histologically about the same. Um, on low power, you can see uh, this is the lumen. And on the outer edge here is where the epithelium is. Um, and if you get a low power image, just be careful that you don't think that this entire thing is the epithelial layer of the uh, fundus and then thinking that this would be the lamina propria. This is actually the submucosa, all right? So this pink band is actually the muscularis mucosa. So that makes it submucosa. And I know this because just underneath this, we have the very large uh, muscularis externa, all right? So if we zoom in, it'll make it more clear. So again, these are the gastric pits. Uh, they're secreting mucus into the lumen. And the glands are going to have uh, parietal cells and chief cells. So if we go back to this image here, um, up here is where you're going to see a lot of mucus screening cells. Uh, down here in the glands, you're going to see chief cells, which are the uh, more darkly staining ones, and the parietal cells, which are more eosinophilic. So if we zoom in, these are the parietal cells, the ones secreting hydrochloric acid and uh, B12, or sorry, um, intrinsic factor. And then the dark three staining ones here, these are your chief cells secreting uh, digestive enzymes. And you can see this pattern where most of the chief cells are towards the bottom and more of the parietal cells are towards the uh, more superficial area. And another thing I want to point out is that the name of the glands will depend on where you are in the stomach. So if you're in the fundus or the body, since uh, those go together histologically, these are going to be called gastric glands. In the previous slide, because we were in the cardia, um, you're going to get uh, cardiac glands. And in the next slide, we'll get uh, pyloric glands. Another cell type that these uh, manual mentions for this slide is the uh, neck, mucus, no, neck mucus cells. So let's try to find those. Those are going to be in the uh, intersection between the uh, pits and the glands. So if we can... Yeah, I find it easier to see it if you have a longitudinal pit like this. So here's your pit, and then it's going into this gland right here. Remember that it's one continuous structure. Uh, down here, it's mostly gland cells, so you have parietal cells and chief cells. And as you go further up, you have kind of a mix of cells, so your mucus neck cells are probably around here. So if you look at the neck in this particular one, you see parietal, looks like some mucus cells, mucus here might be another parietal here. There are some uh, electron micrograph uh, images in the manual for the parietal cells and chief cells and the enteroendocrine cells, so make sure you review that. Um, and the enteroendocrine cells, uh, they should be in the gland somewhere, but they're kind of hard to see. I had a hard time being uh, sure about where they are exactly, uh, but we can see them much better in the jejunum later anyway, so uh, we'll talk about it then. So if we keep going deeper, uh, this is the muscularis mucosa. And in between this muscularis mucosa and the submucosa, you 
can see the muscularis externa, and you can actually kind of see the three layers of muscle here. So this is one layer, the inner oblique layer. Here's your middle circular. And it looks like here is where you have the uh, outer longitudinal. Another thing we're expected to find is the myenteric plexus. So that should be in between the circular and longitudinal layers. I remember looking for something wavy and frothy. I'd say that's one of them, one of the ganglia. There's another one. And finally, let's look at the serosa, which is this out here. This looks like um, might be connective tissue because it looks it just stains so much differently than the muscle cells here. And it looks like we have a mesothelium, which should be a simple squamous. That might be like a mesothelial cell right there. A simple squamous epithelium that just uh, lines the whole organ in this area. And one thing I forgot to mention when you're looking at this at low power, uh, these are rugae, which are, uh, it looks like the submucosa is kind of poking out, pushing the mucosal layer upwards. And these are the gastric folds that you can see on um, gross anatomy. These are not villi. Okay, so villi are much smaller and you don't see them in the stomach. Villi are just going to be in the small intestine. So let's move on to the pyloric stomach. So here in the pyloric stomach, uh, here's the lumen. It looks like we have uh, three rugae here. Uh, this is the epithelium. Uh, we're gonna have the glands here and the lamina propria. This pink band that goes around it is the muscularis mucosa. There's the submucosa and the muscularis externa. So if we go on higher power, Here's one of the pits, and the glands are down here, and the pyloric glands, similar to the cardiac glands, are primarily going to be just mucus secreting. Uh, one thing to note is that the uh, pits are much longer here. They go much farther uh, into the mucosal layer, and the glands are much shorter compared to the uh, stomach, fundus, and body. And on this slide, it's a little easier to see the Appropria, and you can see it's filled with plasma cells. You can also see some uh, lymphoid nodules here. There's one, there's another one over here. Muscularis mucosa. Here's the submucosa, and here's the muscularis externa. This shredding is just an artifact. And if we keep going, I think we can, might be able to see some serosa out here too. This outer edge here. And that's it for this video. Uh, so just make sure you go through the manual and that you're um, comfortable with the cells and like what their function is, not just what they look like on a slide. I'm sure we'll get some second, third order questions on summatives about all that stuff. All right, so good luck.